Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I hope you found the last couple of videos educational and helpful, especially if you are going through TAPS or if you've recently been diagnosed with TAPS. Today we're going to be talking about, I've been diagnosed with TAPS, now what? What questions should I ask? Where do we go to from here? Now, if you're new to my channel and new to my story, I do recommend going back to the last two videos. Um, the first one was about my overall pregnancy and birth story. And the last one was talking about what is TAPS and how it was diagnosed uh, in us and how it is diagnosed. I just want to mention that I'm not a doctor. Um, this is just hopefully a helpful video because it can be really daunting and you have no idea what to ask. Now, I also want to mention the first place I actually went to when we were diagnosed with TAPS was the TAPS support website, so tapsupport.com. And we also went to their Facebook group, which is a private support group. And I actually asked questions there. That support forum is fantastic and full of people that have been through this or are going through it. So I highly recommend that if you are going through it, that you jump on there. So all you need to do is go to tapsupport.com and then follow the links to their Facebook group. Now, when we were diagnosed with TAPS, um, the first day, they basically said, you know, um, just take a day to relax and we're going to get you to come back in a couple of days to um, have another scan. Now, this is normal protocol in cases of TAPS. Because the middle cerebral artery is such a hard reading to get or can be such a hard reading to get, you've got two babies that they need to do that measurement in. Um, they do ask you to come back in a couple of days just in case the readings were wrong. Now, it's important to remember that TAPS is a relatively new disease, so only about two decades since the discovery of TAPS. And it's not comparable to twin to twin transfusion syndrome. So I have explained that um, a couple of videos back and you will get a lot of people calling it twin to twin transfusion syndrome. So it's important to not get caught up in Googling things and assuming that laser um, therapy is the best course of action or best treatment for TAPS because they actually just do not know yet. So the way things went with us is we had a first scan uh, that indicated the presence of TAPS. We had a second scan a couple of days later and that confirmed TAPS and what stage it was at. And then we had a third. So our maternal fetal medicine specialist at our local hospital um, actually had a specialist coming down from the MARTA at Brisbane and um, scheduled an appointment with him so that we could discuss treatment options with him. Now, at the second scan, which was with my local hospital, my maternal fetal medicine specialist, that particular doctor actually told me that laser surgery would be likely. Um, but fast forward to the next scan, the um, specialist from the MARTA had a different opinion. And I think that this is important um, because... TAPS is so rare and as I mentioned before, they still don't know the best treatment for it. So sometimes it's good when doctors collaborate on your case and come up with a course of action or treatment for you. So in our case, um, the doctor or the specialist that we saw from the MARTA went through all of the treatment options and then said the best course of action for us was something called expectant management. Now that was a wait and see approach and they decided to put us on weekly scans for the time being. It was at that particular uh, appointment that we asked the following questions. So the first one was, why are you putting us on this particular treatment? So what is it about expectant management that is the best course of treatment for us? Why were we being put on expectant management? Why was expectant management for us better than, say, laser surgery? What are we waiting for? So that was the second question we asked. What are we actually waiting for? So what will be the trigger to change the treatment? The third question we asked is what is our treatment plan going forward? So what will our appointments look like? Who will they be with? And what will happen when that changes? 
So just to recap, the first question I'd recommend asking is why are you doing this treatment? Why are you choosing this treatment over another one for us? The second question I'd ask is what will be the trigger to change that treatment? So what, if anything, will change the course of action or change the treatment plan? What are they watching for? What are they looking for? The third question I'd ask is what is my treatment plan going forward? I also wanted to point out it's really important that you get clear answers to those questions and if you don't, ring them back, ask them to sp ask to speak to them again um, because kind of Googling and asking on forums and things like that sometimes just is not helpful. But if you're confused in the slightest about anything, it's just best to go back to that obstetrician, maternal fetal medicine specialist, whoever is putting the treatment plan in place. Now I'll go through a couple of the answers that we got. Um, so when we asked um, why this treatment and not another one, um, it was a very clear answer. So um, the doctor actually said to me, we prefer to take a conservative approach when it comes to TAPS because why invade um, the uterus and the placenta and um, where the babies are if we don't need to? TAPS is a slow moving disease. We know how many mils a day of blood is being transferred between baby to baby. So we'd, we prefer to take a wait and see approach and a more conservative approach if it's not a severe uh, case that needs immediate treatment. After we asked the second question, um, which is what will be the trigger to change the treatment, they said very clearly that they're looking for fetal compromise. So fetal compromise looks like heart changes, liver changes, um, as I've mentioned in my previous videos. Um, so they were looking for any kind of compromise where the babies are in distress uh, or if they have any changes that need treatment. In some TAPS cases, there can be fluid and bladder changes. They'd also be looking for those type of things. And then for the treatment plan, uh, they gave us very clear answers on that as well. So it was weekly scans going forward. And if anything changes, we would then go to the MADA for treatment. Now, overall, I actually had a really complicated pregnancy and something that I didn't mention in the last few videos is that um, at about 26 weeks, I actually had a bleed. So I had a random, what they call antepartum hemorrhage or APH, and I was hospitalized for four days. They couldn't actually find the cause of that bleed. Um, so I just had to stay in hospital. Um, at that time, I actually received counseling um, as to what would happen if my babies were born at 26 weeks. During that hospital stay, I got the privilege of speaking to my eventually treating doctor, um, Dr. Glenn Gardner of the MADA in Brisbane. He happened to be at my local hospital and I had a wellbeing scan in maternal fetal medicine at 26 weeks. And I was also able to ask him, I guess his second opinion, um, as to the treatment options. And we got super clear answers then. Now, I mentioned a couple of videos back that um, the treatment options that were given to me, there was actually four of them. And uh, through speaking to Glenn Gardner, we were actually able to narrow it down to two, um, an in utero transfusion or early birthing. So the reason for that was because I had an anterior placenta. Um, so my placenta covered the front uterine wall and it meant that I was not a good candidate like with laser surgery where were they going to go so um, I was just not a good candidate for laser surgery at all so in utero transfusion would kind of be my only option um, if appropriate if needed and with the birthing the baby's early option um, you also have to consider the prematurity factor um, but at least we walked away from that appointment with very, very clear options, um, which was really good because when we got to 28 weeks, um, as we know, um, the taps progressed in my babies and we did uh, need to decide on one of the treatments. A fourth question we asked and something that is really important to ask is when do you think my babies will come? Um, so the answer that I got to that was, 32 weeks. So our aim is to get you to 32 weeks. Uh, if things change, we'll revisit that. 
Um, and then I also asked, you know, what will it look like if my babies do come early? So it is important to wrap your head around the prematurity factor. TAPS is a known factor for prematurity. Um, and most TAPS babies are born at 32 weeks. So it is important to kind of discuss with your obstetrician and your maternal fetal medicine team what a 32 week old baby looks like um, and possibly also what treatments they may need to do when the babies are born. Something that you can also ask is for a tour of your nursery, um, so your hospital's nursery, as in the NICU and special care nurseries in your hospital or where you expect to give birth, and also to speak to a neonatologist. So that could be something that you would uh, kind of plan for the following weeks or when you have your uh, scans. And something unrelated to the questions to ask is start planning your hospital bag, start planning your baby shower, do these things early because you know that the babies are going to come early. So try and enjoy what you can. Celebrate your babies, book that baby shower, have fun with your friends and have your hospital bag ready. It's really handy just to have ready to go. I was in the hospital all the time. My doctors told me that if I had even the slightest concern about anything to present to the hospital. So as I mentioned before, I had a bleed at 26 weeks. Um, I had my hospital bag ready to go in the car and I was prepared for that hospital stay. Um, there was a couple of other times where we needed to go to hospital. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's quite serious. Um, that's probably why you're here. And if you do have any further questions or suggestions or anything that you want to ask me, please put the down below and I'll try to answer them. As I mentioned earlier, please go to tapsupport.com. It's a wealth of information and probably the only resource you, that you actually need when it comes to TAPS diagnosis and head over to their Facebook support group. Thank you so much for watching and thanks for your support. Next video, I plan on talking about in utero transfusions and what those look like because there's such little information out about them. I really want to discuss that and my experiences because I had two. Um, so thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.